Hello grade 10 learners or grade 11s and 12s that are doing some revision. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Miss Martins and we're going to be covering a circuits or electricity exam question in this video. You can find the question linked in the description box below if you want to try it first and then mark with me. Remember to subscribe for more videos like this. Check out the playlist link below for more electricity or circuit videos and more exam practice videos. Let's jump right in. We've got a battery consisting of three identical cells. So a big line and a small line, that is a cell. So we've got one, two, three cells, unknown EMF. So we don't know the total voltage across the battery. It's connected to four resistors as shown in the circuit diagram below. It's always a good idea when you get a circuit question to look at what is connected in series and what is connected in parallel. So looking at this circuit, the total currents will flow through the battery. The total current will flow through A1, through R4, the 2 ohm resistor, and it'll stop over here and it'll split. Some of the current will go through the 6 ohm resistor up here. The rest of the current will go through the 12 ohm resistor down here. So there's a split, current splits in parallel, and then the total current continues, 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 going through R3, and then back to the battery. Very, very important. So what is important to note, the 6 ohm R1 and the 12 ohm R2, these are connected in parallel. R4 and R3 are connected with this parallel component in series. At the moment, it looks like we're not giving a lot, given a lot of information, and we're not. We need to continue reading. They say the voltmeter reads 12 volts, while the ammeter A2 reads 2 ampere. And that is actually given on the diagram already. So the voltmeter over here reads 12 volts. The ammeter reads 2 ampere. So just quickly, the ammeter over here, A2, is not reading the total current. It's reading the split current. It's reading the current that is going through this top branch over here. The voltmeter is connected across the 6 ohm resistor, which is basically the top branch of the parallel components. So what this 12 volt meter, 12 volts is reading is basically the current through this top branch. Now, what you should know is that when we have two branches and they're in parallel, the voltage across that branch is the same as the voltage across the bottom branch. So if the voltage across the top branch is 12 volts, the voltage across this bottom branch is also 12 volts. That means that the voltage across R2 is the same as the voltage across R1, both 12 volts. 5.1 says define the EMF of a battery in words. This is the definition. You just have to know this. And it is the work done per unit charge by the battery. Now, the definition links to this formula. EMF, or potential difference, or voltage, is the work done, W, per, which means divide, units charge, or Q. Now we're jumping into the calculation questions. First question, calculate the effective resistance of the parallel combination. Now when they're asking that, they're basically saying, look at the ones connected in parallel, which is this one over here and this one over here, and they're saying overall, what is the effective resistance of that combination? So overall, what is the resistance of that piece of the circuits? So looking at our formula sheet, they basically want me to calculate RP, resistance in parallel. So we're gonna use this formula over here. So because we only have two branches, we say one over R1, R1 is basically the resistors in branch number one, R2, resistors in branch two. So we've got one over six plus one over 12. That comes from here and here. Work that out on your calculator, you get one over four, but that's not the answer. I don't want one over RP, I want RP. So essentially what you're doing is you're flipping this fraction, you're doing the reciprocal, so you must flip this fraction. So RP is four ohms. You get a mark for formula, you have to write the formula. Substitution, answer with units. Our next question wants the reading on AMI to A1. Now remember A1 reads total current. What we have is the reading on A2, which measures the split current. So essentially how we get that total current is as follows. That two amperes from the top branch plus whatever the current is here in the bottom branch, together those currents will give me the current or the reading on A1. So because remember the total current splits. Some of it goes through the R1, so two amperes goes through R1, the rest goes through the bottom. So if I can figure out how much current is going through the bottom here, I just add that onto to two and it gives me the total current or the reading on A1. 
I'm going to show you both methods of how you could do this because you never know which method you would prefer. Maybe in one exam question, one method makes more sense. So the one way you can do it is to use ratios. So how this works is as follows. You write down the ratios of the resistances. So R1 to R2. What resistances do we have? R1 is 6 ohms. R2 is 12 ohms. If you simplify that ratio of resistances, we get a 1 to 2 ratio. That is the ratio of resistance. To get the current ratio, we flip it. And I, I always explain to my students why, because it's important to understand why. Why do we flip the ratios? It's because the smaller resistor, okay, smaller resistor gets the bigger current. The bigger the resistor gets the smaller current because current and resistance are inversely proportional. So you write down the ratio of resistances, you su um, simplify, and then you flip it to get the ratio of current. Now what we have, what is given to us in the question, is the current going through R1? 2 amperes is going through R1. So here's R1. The current that we have going through R1 is 2 amperes. So I want to work out the current over here. So we use this ratio to get there. How do you get from 2 to 1? You divide by 2. So that means you have to divide this by 2 to get that current. What is 2 divided by 2? 1 ampere. And does that make sense? Yes, it does. Because if you think about it, the, ra the ratio of resistance is here. 12 ohms is double the resistance of 6 ohms. So if 12 ohms has double the resistance, it's going to get half the current. So if 2 amperes goes through the 6 ohms, 1 ampere must go through the 12 ohm. Okay, so if the resistance doubles, current will halve because they are inversely proportional. So what that means is that through the top branch, we have 2 amperes. Through the bottom branch, we have 1 ampere. Therefore, the total current is 3 amperes. That's one method to get total current or the reading on A1. Another way to get the answer is to work with this formula. V equals I times R. Now, you may have learned about it in grade 10. If you take a look at the formula sheet, it's actually not there. But I know that some schools do teach it in grade 10. It's Ohm's law. Maybe you haven't learned it in grade 10, but it is very useful and very important. So the potential difference or voltage is equal to current times resistance. Or we can rearrange it like this. Okay, or like this. And if you haven't learned it yet, they, you can teach it to, or you can know it in a triangle like this, V-I-R. This triangle helps me get all of these formulae. Now, how will this help? What I can do is if I know resistance and I know current, I can get voltage. Okay, so if you take a look at the top branch over here, and actually... We don't even need to calculate voltage for the top branch. We know it. But if I know resistance, 6, and I know current is 2, this is for the top branch. Resistance is 6, current is 2. Then you go V equals I times R. 6 times 2 gets me 12 volts. So we know the voltage for the top branch is 12 volts. But remember, we discussed that because the 6 ohm and the 12 ohm are in parallel, you need to know that current will split. So current will be different. Especially if this, well, if this and this are different, current will split, it's different, but the voltage is the same. What that means is the top branch has a voltage of 12 volts, the bottom branch has a voltage of 12 volts. So if we look at the bottom branch, and let me change my color so I can write it with a different color. If we look at the bottom branch, voltage is also 12. It's also 12 volts. The resistance of the bottom branch is 12 ohms. Now to get current, current, question mark, what was the formula I just showed you? It's over here. Current is equal to voltage over resistance. So current is equal to voltage divided by resistance. 12 divided by 12 is 1 ampere. What that means is through the bottom branch, I've got 1 ampere. And what's the current through the top branch? 2 amperes. Therefore, once again, the total current or the reading on A1 is 2 amperes plus 1 amperes is 3 ampere. I hope that helps. That's method number 2. My next question wants me to calculate the energy transfer to resistor R3 in 2 minutes. So, first things first, they want energy. But what you need to know is that energy... 
the symbol for energy is actually E, but energy is essentially the same thing as work. So energy transferred is the same thing as work being done. So they're looking for W or E. If you look at your formula sheet, where do you see a W or an E? I see a W over here in this formula. So we need to work out energy. We need to use this formula, this one. Okay, we're working out W. That's our question mark. They say um, transfer to resistor R3. So what that means is that we need the voltage across R3, which we do not have, I think. Let's just double check. Let's take a look at our picture. Do we have the voltage across R3? Yes, we actually do. Okay, so that we have. the. If you look at the picture, remember, we know the voltage across R1 is 12 volts. But because R3, no, sorry, this is R2. We don't have the voltage across R3. Here's R3 over here. We do not have the voltage across R3. Okay, so we need to first work out the voltage across R3, which we will do in a second. Once we have the voltage or the potential difference, this, and the charge, Q, then we can work out the energy transferred. But I don't have charge. Where do I get charge from? Well, look at your formula sheet. There is a formula for charge. It's over here. Charge is equal to current multiplied by time. So let's write that a bit bigger. Current multiplied by time. Do we know the current? Yes, we do know the current that goes through R3. Because remember, R3 is connected here in series, which means the total current will flow through R3. So remember, the reading on A1 was 3 amperes. 3 amperes travels... Everywhere in the circuit, we have highlighted it as yellow. So three amperes will go through A1 and three amperes of current will go through R3. So we know the current and the time was given in the question two minutes. However, when you use it in this formula, it must be in seconds. So this is the steps that we're going to follow. Remember, our ultimate goal is to work out the energy transferred and energy is the same thing as work. So we're looking for W. Step one, we need to work out the charge using Q, Q equals I times T. Once we have Q, we can put it in there. Step two is to work out the voltage across R3. Once we have voltage, we can put it in there. And then finally, we'll be able to find W, which is energy or work. So the current that flows through R3 is three amperes multiplied by 120 because remember time must be in seconds and they told me it was two minutes we get 360 coulombs step one done then to work out voltage we need current and resistance so again the current is three amperes and the resistance over here is two ohm three three times two so my voltage is six volts final step put those numbers in here and solve so we substituted our numbers in, then you say 6 multiplied by 360 and you get 2160. Your unit for work or energy is joules, J. My next question wants the EMF of each cell. Now remember we discussed the fact that there are three cells in the battery. So basically if we know the voltage across the battery or the EMF of the battery in volts, we divide that by three and then we'll get the EMF of each cell. But I do not know the EMF of the battery or the total voltage of the circuit. So first I have to find the total voltage of the circuit. And remember voltage is divided up amongst the components in the circuit. What that means is that the total voltage across the battery is divided up so that some of the voltage goes here some of the voltage goes to the parallel component and the rest of the voltage goes here. So because R4, R3 and the parallel combination are connected in series, basically, the voltage, this voltage over here splits up amongst these pieces. Now, what we already know is the fact that because the voltage across the top branch is 12 volts, the voltage across the bottom branch is 12 volts, what that means is overall, the parallel combination, this section of the circuit, has a voltage of 12 volts. We also worked out in the previous question that the voltage across this part of the circuit is 6 volts. Because this resistor here has the same resistance it, and the same current travels through it, same R, R is the same, same current, I is the same, it means that their voltage will be the same. So if this is 6 volts, this is 6 volts. Now, what that means is that the battery, the EMF of the battery is 12 plus 6 
plus 6, which is 24 volts. So actually, that is part one of my answer. We need to go 12 volts plus 6 plus 6 equals 24 volts, and that is the total voltage of the battery, total voltage or EMF of the battery. And then how many cells do we have? We have three cells, so therefore we take 24 and we divide it by 3. 24 divided by 3 is 8 volts. So each cell has a voltage of 8. 8, 8, 8 together gives me the 24. Now for an explanation question. These are popular. They'll always ask this in your exam. A fifth resistor R5 is now connected in parallel to R4. So here's R4. We connect R5 in parallel to R4. So instead of just having this one parallel combination, we now have two parallel combinations. Will the EMF of the battery increase, decrease, or remains the same? That answer is remains the same. By adding another resistor in parallel, that does not affect the EMF of the battery. Okay, the EMF of the battery will always be constant. Then, will the reading on A1 increase, decrease, or remain the same? Give a reason for the answer. Now, how you start off with this question is knowing that A1 measures total current. So basically what this question is asking is if I add another resistor here in parallel, what will happen to the total current of the circuits? You need to know that when we add a resistor in parallel, yes, we are adding a resistor, but it actually decreases the total resistance of the circuit. Think of it like this. By adding resistors in parallel, we're giving the current more pathways to flow. So instead of all the current having to flow through R4, some of the current can flow through R4 and the rest can flow through R5. So it's easier to flow. So we're adding a resistor in parallel, but it's decreasing the total resistance of the circuit. And remember, resistance and current are inversely proportional, which means they do the opposite thing. So if total resistance decreases, total current will increase, provided that the voltage remains constant, which it does. So your answer is increases, total resistance goes down, therefore total current goes up, but voltage must be constant. Your third variable in your relationship must always be constant. I really hope that this was helpful for you. Please check out the links below for more circuit pass paper examples, more pass paper examples of other questions, and for more circuits in general. Bye everyone!